Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to My Pixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. Today, we're going to make it possible to advance to the next stage in our game. Up until now, we've been doing all our work in stage one, but I think it's time for a stage two, so let's get into it. Today, we'll take several things that we've learned in this series thus far and put them together to achieve something new. We're going to transition to the next stage of our game when we touch a certain point in our stage. The first thing that you're going to need is a new stage to transition to. Up until now, we've only built out one stage. I've gone ahead and created a stage 2, as you can see here. So I, have a, I have the stage 1 that we're used to seeing, and now I have a stage 2. So I've created a new stage 2 ahead of time. So what you can do here is just go ahead and pause the video and I'll wait until you're done building your stage 2. All done already? Wow, that was quick. Alright, let's move on. Let's create a new scene. The scene is going to become our trigger for transitioning to a new stage. So we can just go ahead and click this plus button right here. Start a new scene. Okay, and the first thing we're going to add to our new scene is we are going to add an area 2D. So we add our area 2D. Now let's go ahead and rename our area 2D. I'm just going to name it to change stage. It's uh, pretty descriptive, right? Pretty easy to understand. So we have our area 2D named change stage. To that we're going to add a child. We're going to add a sprite. And then as another child of the uh, change stage, we're also going to add a collision shape 2D. Okay, and with collision shapes, you remember we need to have a in and um, let's see what what is it called here shape, right? We we've been using rectangle shapes until now, so we're going to add a new rectangle shape to the. Actually, hold on. Before we do that, to the sprite, what this is, is this is just going to be a placeholder. Eventually, um, this could be something in your game that you see, or it could just be an invisible trigger point. But so that it's easy to see when we're editing, we're just going to give it a placeholder sprite. So let's go ahead and we'll put the Godot icon in there. Okay, that's our sprite. And then for the collision shape 2D, let's go ahead and we'll add a new rectangle shape and then if we can zoom in here sorry folks I don't have my mouse today so I'm doing this all with a touchpad but we'll just zoom in here make sure that we have pixel snap on which we do sorry folks getting a little further we'll get there eventually and then we're just going to resize this to our sprite like so. Okay, after we have the visuals for our Area 2D setup, just like to go here and uh, make the children unselectable so that it's very easy to grab this whole Area 2D and move it around as a whole if we need to. I don't want to move it, I just want to leave it there though. Okay, and then before we move on, let's just do a quick save. So I just did a Control S on my keyboard there, it's a shortcut. And then we'll just, we'll save it as change stage, right? The, the same name that our area 2D is named. All right, so save. Okay. Now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and add a script to the area 2D. So you can click on the uh, change stage here. Click on the add script button there. We'll just create. As usual, there's a bunch of stuff in here we don't need so let's just remove the things we're not going to need for now we're not going to be running this in any physics process for the time being so let's just or uh idle process so we'll just get rid of that that there okay so inside of your script in this uh in the top where we usually declare our variables we're going to go ahead and we're going to use some of what we learned before about exported variables so we're going to do an export I'm just going to type this out first and then I'll explain right after I'm done. 
Okay, so string file star tscn var, and then we are going to call this variable target stage. All right. So really quickly, what do we do here? For one, we're using an export variable. I believe last time we used export variables, we had a vector two, and I think we used an integer. This time we're using string. So that, that's what this string is trying to tell you. And next, we have this file. Uh, this keyword file is a hint. It is gonna basically tell the editor that when we when we point and click around and we're looking to adjust the export variable that it's gonna um, it's gonna use its UI built-in UI functions that we're gonna search for a file and the next is another hint is gonna say okay well we're looking for a file the only types of files that we want are ones with extension TSCN so we have an export variable which is a string we know that it's going to be a file. We know that it's going to be a file that ends in .tscn. And then this variable within our script is going to be known as target stage. Now, if that sounds a little bit confusing, we're going to get into our, we're going to see it in practice once we start adjusting the export variable. So we'll recap what these file and tscn hints do. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to know when our character touches the area 2D. So to do that, we can use the signals. So if we go to change stage and then we go into node, we will use the body entered signal. So you can double click that and we're going to connect the body entered signal to our root here, our change stage node, say connect. And then we'll get rid of this pass because we're going to need to input some code here. What we're going to put in here is this. So let's do an if player in body.name get tree dot change scene. Target underscore, oh, gotta, gotta spell it right. Target underscore stage. And our red line should go away, which means we have all our syntax and everything correct. Okay, I'll just drop an extra line in there. All right. So, what we did here is we have this body entered signal. When a kinematic body enters the area, the, this, signal will return the body the kinematic or the kinematic body object that has entered so what this says here is the kinematic body that entered right if the word player is inside of that kinematic body's name in our case our our player here is named player right so it's going to find him so if player in body name then we're going to get tree change scene to the target stage so you might remember from our um, menus I believe the the title menu when we had to change scene into our stage one scene from the title scene that that's all this is so you do a get tree and change scene this is how you're gonna change scenes and then this target stage is the variable that we had set up here right this export variable that is eventually going to be a string that lists the location of our target scene or a our target stage. Now that we have this shiny brand spanking new scene to trigger our stage changes, let's go ahead and instance it in our stage one scene. But first, let's go ahead and do another quick control S, save our work. And then we're gonna jump into our stage one scene. So now we're going to need to go ahead and instance our new change stage object or scene, what have you. It, it's a scene. We're going to need to put that inside of our stage so that our player can touch it. So let's go here. Let's let's just say it's going to be someplace out here. So I can grab my change stage scene. 
and I can drop it in here. It's going to be really easy to see because we got the visible sprite and everything like that. Let's just go ahead and drop it here. About there is fine. All right. So now that it's in our scene, we can select it. Okay, node, and we need to go to inspector so that we can see the the properties there. Okay, so we have our script variables. You see where it says target stage. This is our export variable that we created. Because we use the file hint, we get this nice little folder. Right? If we had used something like an, if we said it's going to be an integer or something, then our UI would be something like this, right? This gravity is in integer and you would get arrows, right? If there's a vector, it would show you that with a parenthesis that it's a vector and you have a different way to use the UI to manipulate this. Because we said file, we went ahead and we got this little folder. So we can click it, makes it really easy. And we can clear our entry or we can select the file like, like we specified. So that's what the file hint did. And the star.tscn hint as you can see down here, it's already gone and done the work for us and it's filtered out the files that end in .tscn. So I think very quickly you can see, you don't, you don't have to use these things, but if you just said string, let's say, you would have to type out the name of the whole resource path. It's like res colon slash slash and then you would have to type the name and worry about typos. But if you use these hints, then you get to use Godot's UI, and then you just point and click your way to success here. So that, that's what we're gonna do today. So for this, we're gonna wanna go to stage two. I don't, this is where we set our target stage. So let's select our stage two, that TSCN. Go ahead and open, and then it populates in here. It, yeah, okay, if you hover it over, then you can see. So yeah, you see it says res colon slash slash, stage two that TSCN. If you didn't put the file and start a TSCN hints, you would have to type this exact string manually. So because you use the hints, you're able to just get Godot to put the string in there for you. And because Godot did it, you know, there's going to be no typos. So that's great. Now that we have that in there, that should be all we need. So let's run our game and try it out. Okay. And um, sorry, sorry, folks. I'm gonna wait, waste a little bit of time and and run through the stage. I, I thought the uh, change scene would would be more meaningful if it was at the end of the stage. So, excuse me while I knock down some bad guys. There's our screen shake that we just did last time. If you all watched that episode, uh, there should be another big guy over here. I'll shoot him in the back. Okay, he goes down. Okay, and now you see our our trigger point. Now we're gonna go ahead and touch it and see what happens. All right, see it dropped us in our stage two. All right, pr pretty easy. So in our stage two, I went ahead and built it out like this. You got this crazy guy running around and everything like that. All right, so we know we can move from one stage to the other. So we can jump out of that. Now, just for fun and for a little more practice, why don't we go ahead and we'll do the same thing in our stage two scene. Because we don't have a stage three scene, we'll just make the stage two scene take us right back to the stage one scene. All right, so we're gonna go in here. We'll find a nice place to put it. Maybe I'll, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna try really hard over here. And we'll put it all the way up here. So grab your stage two scene. Oh, sorry. We don't want to do that. We want to grab our change stage scene, excuse me. And we'll put it up here. All right, kind of like a secret level in, in Mario or something like that. All right, you gotta climb up this hard to get place here. Okay, and then we're just gonna run our stage two scene straight. Since we're sitting our stage two scene, we can use this run scene button here. I think it's called launching play scene. And then we'll play the scene that we're currently sitting on. So let's do that. Okay, so let's just say we were in our stage two scene. Okay, we're, we're running around in here. Knock out some of these, these bad guys. They look like they're smiling. They, they look happy. Maybe they're not actually bad. 
And did I, <laughs> I barely made it. Thank goodness. All right. So we're in our stage two scene. We put our trigger scene in there, jump in, and then we got an error. And as I was going into it, I realized that I didn't even set anything in here. What? What a fail. Okay, so. Let's see. So it's null. We need to make sure we go to file. And then we're going to say stage one because that's what we said. We're going to go back to our stage one. So let's try that again. I hope I make it up to those, all those jumps again. I designed it so it's just barely doable. So maybe that wasn't the smartest thing. Shoot some of these guys, make sure I don't fall and land on them and hit myself. Got up there. All right, okay, I made it. All right, so we're in our stage two. We're going to stage one. There we go. We're back in stage one. All right, and just to prove to you that there's there's no funny business, like, hey, you know, this you can't actually change scene more than one time. I, I don't know why. I, I don't know why anybody would would think that but hey just just in case you do I'm gonna show you here you can change scenes as many times as you like and it will not be a problem so we started in stage two we went to stage one we go back to stage two again I can run through this thing as much as I like right let's just try it one more time sometimes it's good to do these things for debugging sometimes there are instances where it works sometimes but then not others and then there's a limit to how many times you can get it to work depending you know might be in your code you didn't realize that you put a limit on something but in this case we don't have any limits and there we go right we went from stage two back to stage one back to stage two and back to stage one so everything works great there's one more thing that I wanted to cover I actually forgot about it for a little bit, but it's uh, the fact that maybe you don't want to see this here. Right? We assigned it a sprite, so it's really easy to see, but let's say you just want this to be an invisible area where if you touch it, the player still gets sent to the next stage. What you can do in that case is, here we go, here, here's that object, right? our change stage object, and you just go ahead and toggle the visibility off. Right? You see, it's still there, and it's still active. All the scripts and everything are still going to work. It's just that you can't see it. So let's go ahead, and we'll try and run the game just to prove that it still works. So we'll run here. Okay, let's get through our stage. I think next time maybe I should put it at the beginning of the stage, huh? And we don't have to blow this time. I'm kind of having fun playing through the stage, though, so... If you just bear with me here, okay, we'll knock that guy down. And as we run toward the end of the stage, we see, okay, there, there's nothing here, right? We're coming up on it. It's probably right around here. So let's take a step forward and see what happens. Okay, and it works. All right, so now you know that if you want, you can hide it. It's not going to be any problem because even though you can't see it, it'll still work. Today we made it possible to take our player to new stages which brings our game up a level. Exported variables once again came to save the day and it made it really easy for us to reuse our new change stage object. And we also got to see some of the little exported variable hints that we can use to make our game development easier. And that's going to do it for today ladies and gentlemen. So I'd like to thank you all for watching and I really hope you found this helpful. If you liked today's video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As always, the sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. On that note, I'd like to give a quick shout out to all of my Pixels patrons. I just wanted to say that you're all awesome and thank you so much for supporting the channel. Also, I'm sorry that it took me so long to do this shout out for you all. And with that, we're going to call it a day. So thank you again so much to everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Take it easy.